Hello and welcome to Let's Build a Castle Terrario Edition. Now, my first ever video on YouTube was building a castle and we're going back to basics in Terraria. Basically, I want to build a castle on a new separate world with a new character because I need a place where I can do guides to show you guys some of the classes that we're doing because I'm a yo-yo warrior in the Druidaria series that we have. But also I wanted to go over different mods as well, spotlights, and just take a closer look at some of the other things in Terraria that you guys might not see that we might glaze over if we don't do it in the main series. Also, if you're new to Terraria, you might be able to get some tips and kind of learn the ropes. <laughs> I'm by no means a pro, but I really wanted just to build this castle as a place to hang out and test things and do other videos. So let's get about it. I'm going to show you what I've got in preparation because this is kind of creative mode in a way. I'm using a few mods and this is a cheat sheet mod that lets you spawn in items and change some of the things about the world, like the spawn rate for monsters. We're going to, oh, whoops, we're going to take that right down to 0.25. So, monsters should spawn uh, about four times less. So the first thing we have, let me close the cheat sheet. The first item on our list is the laser drill. It lets me drill things that are quite far away. And you see you get this pretty gnarly kind of guide to show you where you're drilling. And that's pretty cool. And the laser drill is a vanilla Terraria thing. We've also got the Terra pickaxe, which is a super good axe. But also a super good pickaxe as well. It's very quick, which means we can dig things really quick. Like, get these trees out of the way. No sweat. Bam, one shot. Now, the Terra Pickaxe is from the Pump King mod that we've installed. We've also got the Nano Jackhammer, which is basically um, a really good hammer. But let's remove that because it's not quite as good as the Crystal War Hammax, which is much quicker and lets us dig through the background wall super quick. And that's about all I need in terms of tools. I got my good pickaxe, my good normal axe, uh, or rather a long range pickaxe, and my axe slash pickaxe, and my crystal warhammer. That's great. That's all I should need at the moment to decorate things. I'll probably need a paintbrush and some paint later on, but we'll worry about that later. I've also got builder potions, and these increase the placement speed and range of what you're building, which is going to come in handy as well for building a massive castle for sure. And to keep me safe, I've got the Raven Star. And what this does is it lets me uh, summon in a raven to protect me. And this guy should be enough to zip around and, uh, and pick off all of the monsters that I don't want to concern myself with while I'm building. Now, also, we have some armor over here. Oh, that's the fur coat. So we're going to use uh, wolf leggings, wolf helmet, and the wolf jerkin. And these are from Tremor Mod, and these allow me to have uh, more minions. So I can take the Raven Staff out. And bam, we can have three Ravens flying around protecting us. I've also got Slime Face here, my old trusty friend. And accessories-wise, I've only got one thing, and that's Warp Core Boots. Now these are, again, a mod item. And they're from Thorium Mod, and oh my god, they let me go ludicrous speed. Holy crap, that's insane! Now, on top of that, I also have, in the equipment section, a few little things. I've got the Cosmic Car Key, which summons a UFO mount. And this is basically like creative mode flying. I can fly around and easily get to the areas that I need to build on. I've also got the Lunar Hook, which is a four-pronged hook that will let me kind of suspend myself from buildings if I need to. I shouldn't, though, with the UFO. So there you go. And obviously Slime Face and Twinkle, who are also from mods. Right, so let's mount up and get on with the build. I'm going to be spawning in items using the uh, the item browser here, and it's time to build a castle.
Okay, so this is the end of part one of the Terraria castle build. And let me walk you through what we've got so far. Right, so this is the drawbridge with the chain that kind of sucks it up back into the castle if there's any rude dudes outside that we don't want to let in. There's also the wheel here that kind of winds the chain and racks it up. Now, the first tower on the left is the military tower. And this is where our military NPCs are. And if I open up the um, the housing menu, you can see you can see that we've got the uh, the knight, the archer, the guides here at the moment. But we'll find another home for him, and we'll put in perhaps like the other knights and and combat orientated characters as they move in. And then we've got this bridge that we built between the first and the second tower. And the second tower is the knowledge tower. So this is where all the bookcases are. We've got the big library section here, the stained glass window behind. And I guess being a nurse requires a lot of uh, a lot of studying. So she's here. The warlock's here, the sorcerer. And also we've got Gus, the, uh, the basic merchant that you get. Pretty much the first NPC almost that you do get. So yeah, the, the wheel here is the pirate wheel. And these chains are iron chains, which are, are basically just iron bars. I'm not quite sure how the, um, how the pirate wheel is crafted, but it is. We've gone for the obsidian theme in the combat tab because it's a very kind of dark and gothic kind of uh, kind of feel. Now we use lead fence and iron fence to brace the bridge here. And the wood that we've used throughout the castle for the floors uh, is dynasty wood because it works so well with the roofing we've used. Now the roofing that we've got here are dynasty shingles. I can show you those. Blue dynasty shingles and red dynasty shingles. And they look great as kind of tiled rooftops. Got a wooden wall in the background and the bulk of the castle is built with stone slabs and stone slab walls. We've got wooden beams here that are kind of the empty gap, which shows where the doorway is going to be when the when the drawbridge is raised. And we've used stone brick on the floor over here. The lanterns, I can't remember what these lanterns are. I think they are caged lanterns. Yeah, that sounds about right. And we use yellow stained glass on these windows up here. But that might be something I've changed because I've used yellow torches as well. And the, the effect is kind of messy on the eye. I used planter boxes here, in this case day bloom, because that gives that kind of really cool look of like flower boxes outside a window. And now I wanted to stick with the theme for uh, all of the towers. The first one being obsidian on the, on the combat tower, but the knowledge tower, I've gone for pearl wood. It's got a bit more of a sophisticated feel to it, and I like that kind of light green as well. I think it suits the kind of learned characters that are going to live here. And we've used bookshelves from all over the world, so there's like dungeon bookshelves, bone bookshelves. I wanted to do just like a spectrum of all the different types of bookshelves, just so you get the idea that these are books gathered from across the world, from the snowy wastes over to the deepest dungeons and the grassiest plant biomes. And there you go. That's the uh, that's the start. That's, that's the first two towers built. Oh my god, though, this in total took me about four or five hours. So luckily I've got the UFO to speed things up. And I've learned a few things as well about how to build. I changed out my armor set to be uh, increased mining speed and increased melee speed because increased melee speed increases the speed at which you swing things like a pickaxe or a hammer. And the summoned raven gets stuck a lot of the time, but most of the time he does a good job of protecting me. And between the two towers on the ground floor, we've got this kind of like walkway section with roofing as well that kind of gives the illusion that that's somewhere you can be even though you can't. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with this build so far. Join us next week when I think I might move on to the dungeon because once I get the dungeon done, the dungeon's gonna be the combat test zone because I wanna go through and test a lot of mods and I need a space to do that with a combat dummy so that I can look at DPS and see how much damage certain weapons do. I'm probably gonna need a boss fight arena, but that's something that I probably won't put near the castle because I don't want the NPCs to get totally wrecked by things like um, the, uh, the Devourer of Worlds, uh, the Eater of Worlds, or Eye of Cthulhu, whatever. All of those bosses are going to pretty much destroy my NPCs, and I want to protect them as much as possible. So I'll make an arena somewhere off. But yeah, join me next time when we're going to be building the dungeon section down here. And that's where we're going to do the class guides as well. I want to look at the Yo-Yo Warrior, the, uh, the Magic Users, the Ranged Classes, and the Summoner Class. All of the classes that me, Duncan, Tom, and Lewis are using in our series, I want to go over and cover so that you guys at home have a better grasp of what it is we're trying to build and what our goals are in terms of the end game weaponry. So hit like, subscribe, click the bell to get notifications, and I'll see you next time for another Let's Build in Terraria. Take care.